On a scale of one to Clark Griswold's station wagon, how much do you like wood? Cause I may have the ship for you. Fooder is back and while I just made a video on this ship one short year ago, my tune has changed and I'm going to give you a few reasons this knockoff JB may be worth picking up. First of all, what's the difference and can you really tell it's not Jean Bar? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> LF, gun range is a full kilometer less. The reload is a full second slower, and she has worse Sigma of 1.7 instead of 1.8, meaning the accuracy is worse. Now to make up for it, LeFoudre has a longer secondary range, base 6.7 kilometers. Does that really matter? Probably not, because the French secondaries are mostly 100 millimeters. They only pin 16 millimeters of armor, meaning they shatter harmlessly on most ships. They do set fires pretty well. Overall though, to me, right now in the game, there is only one French battleship that is worth setting up for secondaries, and that is the Flander. It's the only one worth building into. Fooder, you're gonna have to set her up just like JB and hope for the best. Now, it's easy to make fun of this ship that is clearly way worse than JB, but Jean Bar is so freaking good that even a ship half as good is still good. Does that make any sense? You're not gonna ever get John Barr unless you win her from a crate, in which case you may just play the lottery. And with all that said, if you have Azerlane Dunkirk and put her on here, you can still have a very, very good ship. Shajard would work fine as well if you're free to play. And I've been using Cunningham and D Ravel. I feel like it's a nice blend of spam and accuracy. The truth is, you're not gonna make these guns accurate. French dispersion plus the low sigma are a double whammy, and you're really just gonna have to rely on how fast these guns reload. On my build, that's 20.6 seconds, pretty fast. Fast enough to have good AP TPM, but also enough to be a good fire spammer, and we're gonna teach this JB player a lesson in fire spam. <laughs> in this match, we couldn't really progress any farther in so we're just kind of stuck dealing damage to this JB here. We got a good use out of the reload booster early on in the match with the Shores, and that is one of the great things about this ship and just still makes her better than Richelieu, the tech tree version, is having that reload booster. But yeah, since we can't progress in, we're just gonna fire spam. We just have to burn this JB down before we can move into B cap. And I know it's all the terrible, terrible things a battleship player shouldn't do. <laughs> We're shooting HE, we're sitting bow in, and we're now reversing. It's it's awful. It's, it's awful. Look away. But that's the reason these French battleships are so good. Their simplicity of playstyle. Most novice players can get their hands on one of these and do well just because there, there isn't much to it. It's so easy to play. A caveman could do it. Aim the pointy part of your ship forward and start shooting. It's that simple. Now for my positioning. We did try to stay away from the Lennon a little bit, who spawned with us, of course, to try to get some different angles of fire since he was going out wide. If he had chose to come here where I'm parked, I would have hit the speed boost and headed for the flank because JB, Richelieu, LeFoudre, or basically any French battleship is a good flanker because they're pretty fast, or at least they have that wonderful French speed boost consumable. But that's the biggest thing about being a battleship player, I'd say one of the biggest tips is you should be several kilometers away from friendly battleships. You should never be in the same square, which is one of the reasons we complained about Will to Rebuild so much, because it just promoted terrible battleship play. So anyways, this morning I was watching my old LeFooter video from a year ago, and I was like, wow, I sound so bitter and pissed off and then i remembered reviewing this ship last year i was on like a five game lose streak terrible rng worst teammates nothing was going right and i had to get the review done that night i almost just posted that video again this year to share it with you but man i just sounded so pissed off i wanted to remake it this morning this was the first game we played and it just goes to show that um this ship is pretty consistent i mean if you play her in the same way you're gonna get trolled by rng a little bit but honestly, like it's it performs pretty consistently. And I think, if I recall, I remember a while ago, it's probably been, I don't know, probably the end of last year or so, I think that I heard that LeFooder was one of the top performing battleships at tier seven. So pretty interesting. Now, while we're here, we can talk about the rest of the pirate collab. 
Caprice. Oh my gosh. Caprice is the worst destroyer at tier 7. Changed my mind. <laughs> Maybe aside from the Italian one. Not sure, I've never played that one. Um, but Caprice is awful. Definitely do not waste your money on that. The Commanders. French Mike. Eh, he's D tier in my opinion. I wouldn't fork out the money for him. As a French BB commander, this base trait is trash. Because again, like we said, most French BBs have 100mm secondaries. Lots of them, yes. But they don't pin anything, so really the damage is kind of worthless. And his fourth skill slot isn't good enough to not use Master Mechanic. You're going to lose two heals if you have a level 16 commander. So I wouldn't recommend French Michael. The British Lady. The voiceover could be worth it if you're into sultry female British tones, and to be honest, she isn't that useless. This ferret trait, is that a ferret? <laughs> what is that? Anyways, that trait is, is okay. It increases torp reload, and I like that, and I like her skill in slot 2 for Brit DDs. If you single fire, the torpedoes are going to deal more damage. Plus, being in slot 2 means that you can max it out pretty easily, so that's nice. Her and this ship, Le Fouder, are the best parts of the collab if you're interested in forking out any money for it. I would just recommend changing the camo. And fun fact, if you change the camo on Le Fouder, it actually says JB like a tramp stamp right on the keister of this ship, so enjoy. If you're thinking about using a full secondary build, look at this match. How useless would it have been on this match? Now here pretty soon, we're just going to have to start pushing B because our team is running away from it like it's lava. I know there are two DDs over here and I understand running from the DDs, but we're just going to have to push into the middle of them. Maybe it's a bad play, but I think it's what our team needed to kind of start getting some cap points and to spur them back in the right direction. The secondaries will help a little bit there. You can watch them, uh, you know, against lightly armored ships, lightly armored destroyers. The They do some decent damage. The 152s on this ship, which are the big ones, I think you have nine of them. That's like uh, Charles Martel guns. They reload in 12 seconds, so not that fast. French Michael. His inspiration could be useful on German secondary battleships because, you know, he's increasing the damage of the shells. Or what about Italian secondary battleships? Could it be good on Colombo? Lepanto? You know, you could really pump up your SAP secondary damage there. It would add around 300 damage per shell on Veneto's 152mm guns. So I don't know. Try it out. Let me know if, if you think that would be worth the build. Now you're going to have to give up something like, um, like Haruno, you know, or one of the other good secondary inspirations. But still, you know, it could be worth it. Now the big weaknesses of this ship, once again, are getting HE spammed since you have that R. Kelly armor yellow everywhere. Also the guns can be knocked very easily. You could use the armament durability mod, I guess, but you're going to lose 5% of your overall health. And you're also going to lose out on that 7% dispersion by not having aiming system. So really you have to decide what's worse. Right now, okay, we're in a very precarious situation. There's a, an Asashio in front of me that has ridiculous torp reload and torp reload boosters. So, and there's a Caprice right to my right. I'm kind of waiting for him to get spotted. We're going to see if we can use propulsion to kind of juke a few of the torpedoes. But again, I really didn't feel like I had much of a choice. We had to start getting in here and getting some capped points. And, you know, pushing into DDs is never smart because you're going to get torped like this, like a doofus. But by us pushing into them, we're going to get both of them spotted. And really, we're going to clear both of them off of the board. So stupid play or amazing play? You decide. AA on Fooder. It's amazing. It's just like JB. It's very, very good. It's up there with like Georgia, Iowa, Missouri as some of the best. And then again, the wonderful speed of these French battleships with the 8% speed boost, I believe. So overall, I mean, even being a worse JB, it's still a strong ship. I call it the uh, we have a JB at home <laughs> ship. And uh, the truth is, you're never going to get JB. It's never coming back to the game. So unless you win her in a crate, of course. So my overall opinion is, if you're like me, you're never gonna get JB. This isn't a bad ship to get. The nerfs, they suck, but still it's solid and you're gonna have good games with her. 
Um, the turret configuration, again, it's so easy to play. The reload boosters are awesome. Speed maneuverability are great. Secondaries, eh, they're okay. How many did we get there? Oh, five. <laughs> we got five. All right, definitely not worth it. But overall, that is my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And again, if you're looking for a secondary battleship, check out this video on Flanders. That thing is so much fun right now. So much fun. All right, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to sub so you don't miss any future videos. This is Dirk signing off. Catch you in the next one. See ya.